been an accident and the casualties rush to hospital. Day and night, sick and injured people have to go to hospital or see the doctor for treatment to make them well again. We need doctors and hospitals. But a lot of the time, what they do is simply help us make ourselves well. For the living body has many defences of its own, and we need the doctor's help only when these defences can't win the battle by themselves. In this film, we'll take a look at some of the body's built-in defences, which we all have. But before we can understand them, we'll need to know what they defend us against. What are the enemies of the human body? Take a look at all these ordinary people going about their lives in a busy town. One important enemy is pretty obvious. We tear around people and vehicles and buildings and machinery, and there's always one enemy ready to strike, injury the body can easily be damaged in some sort of accident. If we're injured, we're likely to bleed. We need our blood supply, so what defence does the body have against loss of blood? We'll have a look using this sample of blood drawn from a vein in the arm. We'll put it in a test tube and leave it for a little time. Now see what's happened. It's clotted, turned into a sort of jelly which doesn't flow, doesn't run easily. The liquid has turned into this sticky clot. Normal blood contains a clotting agent which comes into action as soon as the blood touches a broken surface, like the surface of a wound, for instance. Let's see this in action. A very tiny wound will do so he pricked Jackie's thumb with a very clean needle. She hardly felt it. But there's the blood seeping out. Within a minute or so, it has clotted, sealing up the wound. This clean white blotting paper doesn't show a trace of a blood stain. We scrape the clot off and the bleeding stopped. So the blood contains its own defender, a blood clotting agent which can prevent our losing a lot of blood if we're injured. Of course, for a bigger wound than a pinprick, you'd need a sticking plaster or a bandage, which helps the blood to clot. And for a really bad cut, the doctor might have to put some stitches in to draw the two edges of the wound together. But even then, he's only helping the body's natural defences, because blood clotting isn't the only defence we have. This diagram shows the skin, and it's been injured. There's a cut in it, which has cut some of the blood vessels which you find everywhere in the body. So the cut fills with blood. If a main artery hasn't been severed, when you really must have the right first aid at once, before much blood's lost, it clots inside the wound. Then the other defence mechanism gets to work. Chemical changes take place inside the clot and a substance called fibrin is produced, which forms a sort of stiff network across the wound. As the wound dries, something else now happens. A dry scab forms on top and the strings of fibrin contract. They get shorter, which pulls the edges of the wound together. The blood supply through the blood vessels brings building material along so that new living cells can be formed and after a while the wound heals, leaving only pale scar tissue. A bandage or a sticking plaster or the doctor's stitches are used simply to help this natural process take place. What really happens is that the body heals itself, even if it needs some assistance. But there are other kinds of injury as well as damage to skin and flesh. Our bones can be broken in an accident. This always needs the doctor's attention, but once again what he does is to help the body's natural defence, its natural healing processes. This little boy has broken a bone in his leg, and the x-ray picture shows the break. Surgeons call it a fracture. Under an anaesthetic, they have positioned the bones carefully and put them in a splint to keep them from moving, while his body produces new bone to heal the fracture. There's the fracture again, and in a short time, the fracture is healed.
the body's defences have done the trick, but only because they were helped by the doctor. Here's a fractured hip bone. Once again, it's kept absolutely still in a splint so that the bones can't move, and fresh bone has been produced to heal the fracture. If necessary, surgeons can do very skilled and clever things. Here's another fractured hip. There's the fracture. A special metal pin has been passed through to hold the bone together. And this has been screwed to the undamaged bone to keep it in place. So injury is one of the enemies of the living body and the body has defences against it. But there are other enemies, in some ways more sinister. These enemies are all around us. They can invade our bodies, but they're so small that we can only see them through a microscope. Bacteria, germs. Bacteria are tiny single living cells. The ones you're looking at are magnified many hundreds of times. They can cause infection and illness. They can be very dangerous but they can be useful in the right places in the body. There are bacteria in our intestines which actually help by breaking down some of the substances from our food. We can show their presence quite easily. In this tube, there's a sample of human feces, the waste matter from the food we've eaten, which we excrete, get rid of from our bowels. We heat up the probe in a Bunsen burner flame to kill any bacteria which may be on it already, then pick out a little of the sample. This dish contains a special jelly made from blood mixed with a substance called agar. We smear the jelly with a little of our sample of faeces. Blood agar is a very good nutrient medium for bacteria, that is, it provides good nourishment for the tiny single cells. So if there were bacteria in the faeces, they'll now find themselves with a rich food supply and they'll multiply very quickly, each single cell bacterium dividing into two and those two into four, and so on and so on, until there's an enormous number of bacteria present. We put the lid on the dish to keep any other bacteria out. Then we have to put it in an incubator at blood temperature for 12 hours or so. Too cold, and the germs wouldn't multiply. Too hot, and they might be destroyed. Time's passed and we can examine the contents of the dish again. There were bacteria in the faeces and they've multiplied to produce these colonies. You can see the blobs in the jelly along the lines where we scraped the sample probe. Each blob is a mass of bacteria, so many that you can see them although the individual bacteria are far too small for the naked eye. Here's a closer look. These colonies grew from bacteria in human intestines. They're quite normal there, as we said, they're actually useful. But of course, they're not really inside our bodies. The intestines simply form part of that long tube, the digestive tract, which passes right through the body. Danger arises if these or other bacteria get into the wrong places. This can happen if we have a burst appendix, for example, when bacteria from the intestinal tract can pass into our blood, multiply as they did on the jelly, and make us very seriously ill. Once again, however, the body has its defenders. Do you remember this centrifuged blood? The solid matter at the bottom of the tube doesn't just contain red corpuscles for carrying oxygen around. There are also white corpuscles which can destroy invading bacteria. Here's an example of how they work. The skin's got a tiny cut in it. Suppose we get bacteria in through the cut, maybe from excrement because someone else hasn't been very clean. There are the bacteria. Immediately, the body's defenses come into action. 
The first thing that happens is that tiny new capillary blood vessels are formed to bring blood with its white corpuscles to the scene of the action. There, the white corpuscles destroy many of the bacteria and are themselves destroyed in the process. Pus collects, that yellow-white stuff, a mixture of live and dead bacteria and white blood corpuscles. The place swells as the battlefield gets bigger and you get a yellow-white centre, the pus, with angry red round it from all those blood vessels. This is now a boil, an abscess at the surface of the skin. Eventually it may burst and the pus comes out. The important thing is that it should come out and not get back into the bloodstream, when any live bacteria might quickly multiply and spread round the body, so a bad abscess must have medical attention. Here's a typical infected spot near the mouth. You can see the pus forming in the middle and the inflammation around it. Here's a riper one on the back of a finger. We can use a minor infection like this to show that there are live bacteria in pus. The spot is lanced with a clean, sharp blade. You can see the pus that's come out. Now, using a clean probe again, we take a tiny sample. Then we smear it on some more blood agar jelly. And we put the dish in an incubator and leave it for 12 hours or so. Here's the result. Colonies of bacteria formed by the bacteria in the pus feeding on the jelly and multiplying to produce enormous numbers. This is what happens if bacteria get out of control in our bloodstreams. Different bacteria cause different illnesses. Many of them are highly dangerous to human beings. Here's one way in which bacteria can cause trouble. If we eat a lot of sugary things and don't clean our teeth regularly, bacteria collect and acid forms which destroys the hard enamel. This tooth looks fine until you look at it closely. There's a hole in the crown. Bacteria get in through cavities like this and an abscess can form inside the tooth. The white cells do battle with the invaders. You can see the pus and the inflammation around it but eventually the tooth is destroyed if it isn't treated in time. Abscesses in teeth hurt a lot and they can make you very ill. Too many sweet foods, no proper cleaning, no regular visits to the dentist and you can quickly lose your teeth. The body's defences against bacteria can be reinforced by the doctor. All kinds of antibiotics have been discovered which can destroy different invaders if they start to get the upper hand. Our bodies are constantly invaded by bacteria and a lot of the time they deal with them without any trouble. If they don't, then medicine can help. We can help ourselves a lot by keeping ourselves and our surroundings clean. But as well as injury and invasion by bacteria, the living body has other enemies. It has other defences as well. We'll look at some of them in the next programme.